All right, Bucks win, Bucks win, Bucks win. Um, it was a at, at times it felt like it was going to be a pretty easy victory. It ended up getting a little bit too close for my liking personally. I would have liked for us to just be able to uh, hang on and win in an easy fashion. But you know what? Doesn't always work out that way. At the end of the day, you are playing NFL teams, so uh, makes sense that the Bears. Uh, you know, if you keep failing to go, you know, keep going three and out over and over again. Eventually, Justin Fields is going to go down the field and score. But as a whole, a really great defensive performance by Tampa Bay. And so I will be giving, you know, uh, talking about all of this game. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this every week, talking about every Buccaneers game, but at least the big ones and, you know, at least a good chunk. I'll do just sort of a general thoughts video. Um, Yeah, I mean, let's start off with, I don't know why I want to start off here, but let's start off with how the Bears got back in this game to begin with. And to me, the thing that I point towards is after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers scored that uh, touchdown on the first drive in the second quarter, three straight punts. Um, you know, uh, one of them was a, a three-play punt. One of them was a a four-play punt, uh, and then the uh, and I believe that was still just a three and out. There was just a penalty involved there, and then you had uh, you know uh, an eight-play. Uh, I'm, I'm saying eight-play punt. What I mean is an eight-play drive resulting in a punt. Uh, that needs to be cleaned up a little bit, and I think that's kind of what allowed Chicago to get back in it. At the end of the day, uh, you know. I get why Tampa Bay wanted to run the ball a lot in this game. Chicago playing two safety deeps a lot in this game. I, I totally understood it. I'm not uh, necessarily against it. And listen, it worked. Uh, it did help kill the clock. But kind of what I always say is what helps kill the clock more than anything is a long drive. Like, you know, three rushes still only is going to take two minutes off the clock. You need to get long drives if you're going to find a way to actually, you know, uh, get some uh, kill the clock to in a in a major way, which they just weren't able to do, unfortunately. So, um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, they still won, and the reason they won was because of this great, uh, great defense uh, performance and also a not so great offensive performance from Justin Fields in particular. I thought that you know I made a whole video breaking down Justin Fields' performance, so. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on just specifically that, uh, you can. That's definitely more paying attention to Fields as opposed to paying attention to, uh, you know, the, the the Buccaneers. Although, I brought, you know, obviously, Fields played the Buccaneers, so I'm talking about both. But, um, yeah, I mean, I thought that definitely the defensive line played really well. Now, I thought that it was helped out in part playing against Fields. Fields is not necessarily known for his... Um, you know, uh, he, he takes too many sacks. He does. And he took too many sacks in this game. There were a few plays where he was, in one play, he was holding onto the ball for five seconds, still just standing there with one hand on the ball, like, oblivious to what could be happening. So, like, yeah, that was, uh, a, you know, in a situation where it's a Fields mistake, although it also should be mentioned, you're not giving up uh, a window that Fields feels like he can throw to football. Again, there were times when there were windows that Fields wasn't throwing to either, but at the same time, there were situations where there legitimately wasn't anything for Fields to do with the football. It did go both ways. A lot of people are going to just talk about the negative Fields aspects of it. And again, there's plenty to talk about there. But there were also times of Tampa Bay putting Fields in a tough situation. Um, you know, the two interceptions at the end. Honestly, that second interception from Fields, I'm not really going to crush him for, like, you're trying to make a play at the end of the game. You have to move quickly. You're down two scores, whatever. You know, you kind of got batted up and intercepted. First one was really the only thing that was kind of working for Chicago was running the ball and screen passes. That stuff was working and maybe perhaps something that uh, Tampa Bay can try and work on and fix in the future. That's definitely uh, something they can try and do. But at the same time, it ended up not really being a disaster because of what happened at the end there with Shaq Barrett uh, just doing Shaq Barrett things. I mean, again, he's a smart player, and he was able to read that play and get the interception. So a lot of good stuff. You know, I, th I thought Devin White still was playing, looking a lot much, a lot better this year. He still had that one missed play, uh, that missed tackle on Khalil Herbert, who had a good day. But as a whole... Great defensive performance, and, you know, the numbers for Tampa Bay's offense are fantastic. I mean, specifically, Mayfield and Evans are the ones who those numbers are going to uh, jump out at you. Mike Evans, the 171 yards and a touchdown. Now, granted, Bears fans, well, I think correctly, uh, complain about the fact that, yeah, they did, uh, you know, Evans did push off on a big play there, but at the same time, that's kind of what Evans does, right? Evans knows what he can and can't get away with and tends to do a pretty good job at uh, recognizing it and being able to, you know, 
when he has an opportunity to push off in a way that won't get called, he does it. Because it's one of those things where you are allowed to create contact if you're just playing the ball. Uh, to me, that exceeded the contact you're allowed to play in that scenario, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, for me, I, I would say that that was still a, a penalty that, that shouldn't have, uh, you know, shouldn't have been allowed. However, he also did a lot of really nice things as well. I thought that this was, as a whole, a a good performance uh, by, not a good performance, a great performance by Evans. And there's just moments where you see Evans play, and he just seems like he's the best player on the planet, right? He doesn't do it every single week. There, I think there's better receivers than Mike Evans, but Mike Evans on his best day is certainly, you know, as good as just about any other receiver on their best day. He can be outstanding, and he was in this one. Obviously, there is the asterisk for both of these two teams that a lot of cornerback injuries, and I think that this is probably even a lower scoring game uh, if everyone was healthy. Um, so for Mayfield, you know, I want to be consistent. Uh, every, every time you see a stat line like this, uh, you know, I always try and say, okay, did you earn a st stat line or was it kind of a, you were in an easy situation, guys were getting open and you just, you know, you were able to make the easy plays. In my opinion, in this game, Mayfield, uh, you know, the stat line was inflated. It was. The Bears had some open, you know, windows for Mayfield to throw through. I also thought Mayfield played it played well. Like both can be true, right? You can have an inflated stat line, and also you can have a quarterback who had a good day. I mean, some of those like making something happen type plays, like surely are going to go wrong at a certain point for Baker. Like he can't just keep doing that. Like that's definitely going to be a you know an issue, like him getting tackled and still throwing to a tight end. But it worked out well in this game, and you know uh, I, I, I'm going to be happy it happens until it stops happening. That's how I kind of view this stuff. I also thought that the third down conversion were really maybe the key to this game. I mean, early on, that first drive, getting all those third downs, uh, you know, that third down and 14 touchdown was incredible. Tampa Bay does have to convert better into red zone. That's an issue. I mean, you look at this, uh, you know, the, the 27 points, but 20 offensive points in this one, uh, but it could have been just so much more because there were, you know, several, yes, two touchdowns, but, you know, uh, three field goal attempts in this game on top of it. So the three field goal attempts, you know, one of them was blocked. That could have been uh, potentially more points, and that could have allowed Tampa Bay to kind of run away with it early on. You know, this was only a three-point game at the half, even though I thought Tampa Bay kind of really was uh, pretty consistently the better team throughout this game. They kind of let Chicago hang around, and I think in what, on one hand, you kind of view this and say, hey, maybe Tampa Bay is even better than that than just beating the Bears by 10. The other hand, you kind of have to say, though, that like, it is the Bears, and you probably should be winning. If you want to be the playoff team, you probably should be winning by at least 10. So that's kind of how I uh, viewed all of this. But yeah, um, those are my thoughts. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. What did you think of this performance by Tampa Bay? Always love hearing from y'all. Also, if there's any Rays fans, just saw the Rays lost, so bummed about that. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.